every team would love Harry Kane and for Spurs to lose Harry Kane, you know, if it's now or, or probably next summer. And let's be honest here, it is probably going to be next summer. I don't, unless Hayes Postacoglu is able to to build a, a, a kind of team together that can challenge for a Premier League title this campaign, I don't envisage Harry Kane being at Spurs beyond this season, which then makes it a difficult situation for Postacoglu. I'm not saying sell Harry Kane at any point. Before I go any further in this answer, I'm not saying sell Harry Kane, but I can see an idea behind it. Postacoglu has been brought in to change Tottenham, to, to start a rebuild. It's very hard to do a rebuild when the one man that you would rebuild around, you're pretty confident, won't be there this time next year. How do you start setting up your team, bringing in players? You know, any team would build their squad around Harry Kane if they had him. That is a given. So it would make life very difficult for Ange Postacoglu to try and rebuild a squad, bring in players that maybe play to Kane's strengths or if he's looking at tactics or, or other things to kind of, okay, well, I'll bring this player in, he'll fit in well with Kane, but Kane will be gone in 12 months. It, it makes that job, you know, exponentially more difficult. Likewise as well, if Spurs were to get a nice fee for Harry Kane, um, and I don't think Daniel Levy will accept anything below three figures, if we're brutally honest. And again, whether or not someone wants to pay that, that, that remains to be seen. But I think Daniel Levy will be holding out uh, for for three figures uh, for sure, uh, even though he's only got 12 months left to run on the contract and will probably leave for free next summer. But again, if he is to get a sizable fee, then that allows Spurs to go back and reinvest in the squad and not have to worry so much about, you know, kind of the, the, the whole FFB situation and kind of balancing the books and making sure that you're not spending too much in the window. Um, it, yeah, I, it sounds tough. Spurs shouldn't and won't want to sell Harry Kane. But given where they are now and, the, and their trajectory that they're looking at heading at, I mean, look, you know, you only have to look at, at Liverpool, for example, uh, for, for a really good recent example of, of how you make it work. You know, Liverpool sold Felipe Coutinho for £140 million in, what was it, uh, January 2018, wasn't it? So to then fund the deal for, well, it might have been 17, sorry, but around that phase anyway, um, when he was flying for Liverpool, brilliant player for Liverpool. And they sold him and agreed to a deal to sell him, so that meant that they could go out and bring in Virgil van Dijk, and they still managed to make probably, in terms of the two deals at least, probably still made the guts of about four, uh, £50 million profit on it, um, which again allowed them to reinvest elsewhere. Now, at the time, you would have said, oh, you know, Liverpool selling one of their best players and Van Dijk is an untested centre-half. Now you look back and you go, that was the, that was the deal of the century. You know, what a, what a smart move. And I think maybe that has to be the appreciation for Tottenham here is that, you know, selling Kane might be a necessary evil to allow them to rebuild successfully and rebuild a squad that isn't going to have their star man ripped out this time next year and also to fund that rebuild as well. It's a tough one. You know, of course, we'd love to see him stay and, you know, break the Premier League record at Tottenham and, and be part of Andrew Postacoglu's title winning side next season. But we're not going to get money for him next summer and th there are offers on the table this year. So it's a, it's a yeah, it, it pains me to say it, but I think you have to be realistic and I think Spurs maybe need to cash in. I'm not saying 70 million. Um, you know, it would be the, yeah, as I said, getting up towards three figures before Levy and he, he even accepts anything. Uh, but it might be best for Tottenham's long-term interests, um, you know, past even next season, next summer, when, when Kane will inevitably leave on the free if he doesn't leave this year. It might better serve, you know, short-term pain for long-term gain is what I'm telling myself.